Hi, Mike. Hello. Roberta. Yes, indeed. I see you. Okay. I see Gary. Good evening. Hello. Oh.
probably either fashionably late or having difficulty getting on. I don't think Julie or Carmen could make it. I think they sent emails around. Already. So one, two, three, four, five. So we have sufficient enough for quorum. So I'll call the meeting to uh, order at 6.46. And the roll call. So myself, Michael Morelli, Roberto Lewandowski, Hillary Evans, Gary Paul, Molly Jacobs, Mary McGratton. And there's another person. Oh, I'm here. Megan's here. Megan's here. Ah, jeez. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all right. I can't figure out how to like see everybody. So, uh, I don't know. I hit a bunch of funny little things at the top. top right. You go in the upper right. Yeah, you should be able to right. see the panel view. You'll see it says floating panel view. Hmm. I'll it's find it. I'll find it. Well, when I was at the land use meeting the other night, I was pressing all these buttons, getting all kinds of things. <laughs> you know. Alrighty. Uh, review and approval of the prior meeting minutes. Conservation Commission special meeting of the 11th of August, 2020. Has everyone read it? Is there any corrections, changes? None? Alrighty, I'll make a motion. That we accept the minutes as as written. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Everybody shows aye. Aye. Myself. Already. Second item: Conservation Commission special meeting of the eighth of September, twenty twenty. Has anybody had? The, has everybody had the opportunity to review that one? Is there any corrections, changes, anything of that nature? No. Alrighty, then uh, I make a motion that we accept the minutes of 8 September 2020. I have a second. Second. Alrighty. Alrighty, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Aye. Seven ayes, none opposed. Um, is someone taking notes? I'm going to hope that Julie's going to review this thing and. Or is someone do we need now, Mary? Or can she? Who is, who is Christina? It I says don't. Christina is the host. Christina is the host. Yes. Christina works in the, uh, town hall. Nicole, she should, she's probably take. Is taking the minutes. I can I unmute her, Christina. Can you unmute yourself? Because usually, if you have staff, they would be taking the minutes right. for you, and that's why I saw Christina, and she's the host. Correct. Okay. Yes, I was informed that she was going to be the host. Nicole, okay. that usually does it with us, wasn't able to get hooked up in time, and she okay. informed me that Christina would be doing. Okay. Okay, it'd be, be the host. All righty. Correspondences. Eastern Connecticut Conservation District. Eastern Connecticut Conservation District, just their uh, summer edition of their uh, newsletter came out there. The other one is from 
Connecticut Land Conservation Council. Its registration is open. It's called Connecting the Dots and Taking Action. October 17th, 2020, an online gathering for Connecticut's land conservation community. Uh, they have different keynote speakers. Uh, I guess, you know, it's right, it's a uh, webinar. I guess uh, you're all, you have to uh, register. If there's anybody that's interested in it, give me an email. And I can send along the address, the, uh, the address for it. All righty. Come here, dummy. It's my dog. <laughs> All righty. We have a number of letters from the mail. We have a letter reappointing uh, Gary Paul as commissioner. We have another one, Molly Jacobs as an alternate. Miss Reed reappointed. Mrs. Lewandowski reappointed and Julie reappointed. All righty. All righty. Next would be uh, public comments. I see there is someone else online here. Karen. Is it possible the host can un unmute her? I can't do it. Can Karen unmute herself? Yes, she does, but I don't think she knows how. I just tried. I'm here. Okay. And okay, we also have another gen gentleman over here, Mr. Olson. Yes, I'm Tom Olson. <clears throat> I'm here with two hats. One is the uh, uh, commissioner from the uh, Groton uh, Conservation Commission. I'd like to thank uh, your, uh, your, your group here. Uh, for the great comments that you provided to our draft uh, conservation uh, open space and conservation plan uh, update that we submitted to you for comments and we, we do look forward to working with you in the future uh, as you requested uh, just for information we did receive a number of comments uh, from our various departments within uh, the town of Groton uh, we're working through those right now we've got multiple pages of comments and stuff we're not seeing anything that's going to significantly change it. A lot of technical issues uh, that we're resolving. Uh, but I uh, just want to let you give a, a thanks to you as, and shout out for uh, the great work and taking a look at our plan. Uh, secondly, I'm here with the Tri Town Trail and with Karen uh, relative to as, as for support uh, on any issues or questions you have relative uh, to the trail. Thank you. Alrighty. So I see the Karen. That'd be Karen Parkinson. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say, or are you just looking for comments from us? Um, at the land use meeting, um, the um, okay, the video, so I see you. At the land, oops, where'd it go? Um, where'd I go? Did I just lose you? No. Oh, no. Oh. Okay, I just lost uh, just lost my video um, at the land use meeting the other night. The um, uh, we had a long discussion. Mark was on there too, but the mayor was uh, going to speak to Parks and Recs about us coming out of Parks and Recs. I had a brief conversation with Scott uh, from Parks and Recs today. He said the mayor was going to uh, approach the conservation commission this evening about your feelings about where we, the Tritown Trail should um, come under. Um, so I'm viewing in tonight to see um, what that's, what's gonna happen. Um, we, for many, many months ago, we we presented to the town council that we felt we really needed, needed to be under some town commission or establish an ad hoc committee or something so we could get all our questions, day by day questions answered in an expedient fashion. And as yet we haven't got that um, been assigned to anybody. Um, so I think land use was comfortable with us going under parks and recs or maybe conservation. Um, I think we finally got it clarified at the land use committee that the Tri-Town Trail with our corporation papers, we, 
we're we're not the type of 501c3 that owns things. Avalonia is a land conservation com, um, organization, and they, within their corporate papers, they buy and own property. Within our corporation papers, that's not what we're about. We're about advocating, facilitating, fundraising, making something happen, but we're not owners. So, um, in, in Groton, Parks and Recs are, are, going to, are working on the Groton part to be under Parks and Rec. We have Preston also, but Preston is just a trailhead at the Preston Park. That's their contribution. We really want Ledyard to take, take ownership of their park. So, um, I'll wait and see what other discussion happens later on. Thank you. Karen, it's yeah. Mary. I was at that meeting and I was under the impression that the mayor was going to talk to Scott Johnson the next day and see if um, Parks and Rec would be willing to, I'll say, take ownership of you. Whatever happened? I, they didn't have a conversation till late this afternoon. Oh, okay. Okay, that was the first time they talked, it was late this afternoon. So the mayor was away and I guess it didn't happen the next day. Okay. 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 Uh, yeah, it's Mike Morelli. I was also at the meeting there that evening too. And that's, you know, until we find out what their conversation, how it came about, uh, I would not commit us, the Conservation Commission, as of yet, to uh, running to, uh, like you say, being connected with us. Because I know some of the things that they brought up were they would like somebody on the town hall staff. They're actually a staff, whereas we are all volunteers. And they thought that that would be, you know, uh, you know, more appropriate and probably more effective and better for everyone. So as of this time here, I'm not, we, you know, this is, that was under my impression you speak to Parks and Rec, and I have not heard any word from them. So I okay. don't know if it's a little premature for us to discuss it this evening. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me see. Uh, I see someone else has uh, come in. Beatrice Reynolds. Can you unmute yourself? I'm unable to I'm unmute. Sorry. You wanted me to identify myself? Oh, I just, yes. I know if you had any comments. No, not at oh. this point. Not at this point. All righty. All righty. Is there any more discussions or questions for uh, uh, Karen? Nope. Lee Reynolds is actually a member of our, our, um, our board. So that's why she clicked in. Oh, all right. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, if I may, I can move on to the next item, the informational items. One of the informational items I was going to, you know, relate to the commission was that, yes, I had written back to the town of Groton with comments. And Mr. Olson this evening here has said they were appreciated. Well, I thank you. So, yeah, it was the uh, the. It would seem to be a lot of areas mutual. Uh, uh, I don't think concern is the correct word, but a lot of them, uh, some ideas I think we could work together and collaborate on. Other uh, informational items. The, uh, I've uh, been assigned to the uh, Agricultural Commission. Uh, that does not mean I'll be slacking off here already. Well, that's the Ag Commission. Alrighty. Uh, the other thing was uh, subject I wanted to uh, inform everybody this evening that Karen had already brought up was that land use and the mayor were going to be speaking to uh, Parks and Rec concerning is having Parks and Rec their point person to work with the town to kind of smooth the process for that for uh, Tri Town Trail. Uh, also. I've been in contact with uh, Parks and Rec 
they're ordering signs for because of the leech ordinance that they're going to be posting signs at their properties. We would probably only going to be if we do allow there's probably only two properties we're going to allow leash free areas. It'd be two that are not going to be. So I ordered two signs from him also. That would so they all are uniform throughout the town. He's going to get back to me eventually with cost and everything else like that. Alrighty. That's a box and rack signs. Alrighty. Let me see. Something for us to keep in mind is I understand that uh, building permits, there's been an uptick in the town. So there may be more subdivisions going in, in the future. That seems to be uh, something that may be on the horizon. Let me see what else have we got here. I really don't have anything else to bring anybody up to date on anything. Does anybody have anything? Oh, uh, Roberta. Yeah. Did you get any figures on what we have? I sent you an email with the report Marsha sent me. Really? Uh, could you resend it? <laughs> I don't sure. know if I got it. Or could That's you give me a, a brief outline of what we have now? Yes, I can read to you what I have, uh, but I will resend it. You want me to send it to everybody? Yeah, that's sure. Did. Yeah. Okay. The other thing, um, since you didn't get it, Marsha also included um, a rather extensive uh, commentary on before we submit bills for anything we have to submit uh we have to request purchase orders be created right and so when i gave um when i took the bill to the town hall that you sent me they were not happy that there was not a purchase order already in place so we have to create some kind of a system to um get the purchase orders done before we submit the bill. Okay. 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 And we yeah. can talk about how we want to do that, but that was Marsha um, Hancock's request. Okay. And I'll forward that to you along with the financial report. Um, based on uh, the budget at this time for the trail maintenance, one thousand four hundred and twenty five was added to the trail maintenance as uh, left from the general fund budget surplus. So the total in the trail maintenance portion of our accounts is four thousand seven hundred and fifteen dollars and nineteen cents. All right. The total budget for. 2020 and 2021, which will take us through next June, the money we have in that total budget is 3575 Is that, that, but that would, okay, but we still have, have we paid uh, CCOG? Nothing, nothing shows out of any account right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that was submitted um, before the September meeting. I took that. Only knowing that the mayor had paid it and we, they were just going to rearrange funds from whatever place he took it from and take it from us to reimburse wherever it came out of. So they've been paid, but it hasn't come out of our accounts yet. Okay. All right. I just wanted to get a rough figure because I'm in I'm conversation with a uh, local carpenter. Yeah. And he's working up an estimate now for a bog bridge on Burton Road, on Burton Trail. So I just wanted to know what right. a, a negotiating no. position could be. Yeah. I I don't know. Uh, maybe I can go back and recreate my request to transfer it 
from some budget the mayor used to yeah. us and see how I can move that along. But it can't be this week because Marsha Hancock's on vacation. So right. it'll be um, a week or so before anything will happen at the earliest. Yep. Okay. Okay. I, yep. And That's I fine. will forward that email to you again. Okay. Old business, property walks. Has anyone done any property walks? Yes, Molly? Yeah, I was um, walked around in Pine Swamp yeah. recently, and that was, it was, uh, the water levels are so low. I've never seen them so low. Um, but, I mean, everything looked great. I can't really comment on how the bridges are holding up because I walked right along past, you know, there was no need for them. <laughs> um, but, uh, and we didn't quite get, I agree with me, we, we stopped at the, I don't know if there's another word for those, the boulders up above the water, but um, we didn't get further than that. We called them the dragon caves. <laughs> we had to stop there. But, um, and let's see, where else have I gone? Um, the, the Pequot Trail, the, the portion of the Pequot Trail, I know we put that on our map, but that's, we don't report in on that at all, right? No, that's not yeah. on. Yeah. It's pretty anyway. cool. And neither is the Pine Swamp, but it's nice to know anyways. <laughs> My comment on that would be if the pine swamp is so dry, it's probably the perfect time to do a bog bridge because it'll be dry to work. Yeah. Yeah, like my my daughter was wading out to the middle of those little those shallow ponds because there were islands. There are islands there now because the water levels are so low. Um, I've, I've been noticing that everywhere. Oh, glacier. We walked through glacier as well. That seemed like it was in pretty good shape. All right, I've been down on uh, Burton with the uh, the gentleman I was uh, speaking with. Who's they may that we may have to build the bog bridges and uh, Burton Trail looks fine. There's the, you know it's a lot of leaves. That's it. Uh, Gary and I have been continuing working up there in uh, in uh, Whitehall, and I think I've got it cleared enough enough so where I may try to get uh, Tim Spanos and his brush hog. To take care of the upper meadows, so I think we've cleared enough trails and stuff so he can get his tractor up there. So that that trail is looking fairly decent. I'll probably be contacting him sometime this week see if he can do it. I don't believe um, that we've ever created purchase orders for money out of the Whitehall Trust, but I will check on that. Those bills have always been submitted, um, not through us, but directly to the town hall. Okay. Alrighty. Next item is trailblazers. The other LCC maintained trails. Who has a sense? You've got them. Yes, this is Megan. I have the stencils. Can you get them to me? <laughs> no. um, yeah, we can coordinate a exchange. Mm -hmm. I'll try to I'll try to get some of them while the weather's still fairly decent. Alrighty, but other than that, we haven't we haven't blazed anything else, have we? Uh, uh, uh. The last thing we blazed was the yellow one way trail on um was the yellow trail going one way on Britain. Yes, and that's the one I'm thinking about because when I went up there with that gentleman and on our way back, we got lost. And we went off oh, the trail because no. all the leaves are on there. And you can't <laughs> see what the trail <laughs> was. And then we, oh, wait a minute, we're not going the right way. So, yes. On the yellow trail? On the yellow, on the return yeah. trip. Yes. <laughs> Spot. All um, right. Um, yeah, if you want to send me an email and then we can like work out a, okay. a time. Already. Okay. Yeah, okay. All righty. <laughs> Trail maps. Can this possibly be the last time we speak about them? Um, yeah, I need to ping Liz because I still don't have the JPEG versions that would be going into like a Parks and Rec booklet. Um, so that's that's my bad. Let me um, ping Liz on on that. But yeah, I mean it's 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 done. Um, it's all paid for. Any, you know, and she already finished her time 
with the project. And so she said, you know, anything else, <laughs> like, you know, we're already out of time, you know, so, um, uh, so it's just getting those JPEGs from her. So I need to revisit that. All righty. I think also, uh, the Tritown Trail had been, uh, Interested. I'm trying to remember how this went. I think it was the, uh, all right. Now the Tritime Trail was interested in having their map that they've got put on ours. And I think at the time, because ours are completed mm -hmm. and we couldn't put it on, it was recommended that they send it over to the Hike Legend program, the Hike Legend program so i believe that they are going to be sending it over there so it'll be part of that also on that uh well, i guess that website um do you mean the like list of ledyard trails on the website or what do you mean right you mean just like um on the website the, mm -hmm. the project we just completed Yes. All right. It's too late to add their trails to that. Well, I mean, it's, it's not that difficult. I mean, uh, if I understand what you're think, what you're saying, are you saying to just like, because do they they already have a map, right? I believe so. We'll ask Karen. And feel free to to weigh in. Those of you who are from um, Tri Town. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> yes, we have a we have a map. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, there is a section of the Ledyard Town website, Ledyard Trail Maps. Um, and so we can very easily take the map that you have and put it on that page, put a, a link to um, to your map. And if you, so that we just have to ask Regina to do that. And so um, since it's under the conservation por um, commission portion of the website if you want to send me like a, a a pdf or jpeg version of the map i should probably pdf i think all the other um maps on there are pdf so if you could send me a pdf and then i can have regina um upload it that way it will be included in the list of ledyard trails map could could one of you do that yes we can do that thank you all right can I give you my email address or may, I, may, I might be able to chat it to you. Hold on. Was that um, Karen Parkinson talking? Yes. All right. All right. Karen, I will um, chat you my email address. Okay. Let me know okay. if you don't. Okay. okay. Yep. Got it. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Next. On the list was the, uh, the agenda was a signage at Burton Trail. Did, Megan, did you have any anything on it? Yeah, did you, um, so I sent you an email and Tony Sabilia, did you see that? No, I did not. All right. Hey. Um, all right, I will, I'll resend it. Um, so I sent you what I had, and I, I thought I had connected you and Tony, but I'll have to connect it again. Um, just giving, um, I gave you and Tony the, um, like the Burton Trail map, um, which is what he needs to um, make a trail sign out of it. Right. So. Okay. All righty. All righty. Next uh, on the agenda is the Hike Legend program. And I guess, uh, Megan, you saw the uh, email from Nicole. And so they're making up the uh, PO purchase order to pay for the uh, design of the patches. I did not see the email from Nicole, actually. But that's good to know. <laughs> Anyways, I did. I saw it about maybe 30, 40 minutes ago. I looked and I saw it. It was sent. Okay. Maybe. All right. Okay, got it. Okay, so just to bring everybody up to date on that, it's 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 working through the process. They will get paid pretty soon. Alrighty, the next one is the off 
leash trails. Oh, sorry, Mike, before we move, move on, can I make a yeah. comment about Hike Ledger? Yep. Yeah. All right, thanks. Um, I just wanted to let, just to follow up on what we had talked about um, last month and let everyone know that the the trail map, the town-wide trail map made it into the Ledger Events Magazine The um, with like, you know, an article about it and also um, description of like trails by difficulty. So you know, with a couple huge ads on it, <laughs> but made it in there. Um, I also, um, and there's also a hike ledgered program through Parks and Rec. It's more of like a pre-registration program. Um, so I sent them some information to send out to everybody um, who registered for the program. So everyone who registered for the program and about, I think it was like two weeks ago, there was about 25 people who had registered. So everyone who registered is going to get like um, a link to the web page that has all the trim maps on it, as well as you know, the the same information that was in the um, the Ledger Events magazine, which is just like that list of hiking trails by difficulty and the, the townwide map. Um, and also, you know, letting people know that more information will be available when the program officially launches. So just that's an update on, on all of that. And then um, Karen Parkinson, if you're still listening, if you have GPS data of the Tritown Trail, um, could you also send that to me? And I might be able to um, ha have Liz like put that into the Townwide Trail map. I think um, some of our um, members that are runners also have run it and had a copy of Kevin DeFilippo's on here too. He has a, that would be a GPS thing where runners have traced their whole map of their running it. That's an yep. interesting thing to post, right? Yeah, I think I saw his, if, if you posted it yeah. in the Hike Ledyard Facebook group. Yeah, right. really yeah, cool. Yeah. We can get that to you. All right, thank you, Kevin. Sure. Um, is that, is that, um, GPS data that you have just, is it from your smartphone, Ben? Yep. All right. Thank you. Um, cause I am, so with, with the data that we had Liz Crutcher from CCOG, um, work on, um, some of the data was from smartphones and, and that did require some more, um, editing. And I kind of think that next year we'll have to do, or next year or sometime in the future, we might um, need, to, there's more, there's even more trails in Ledyard. So I wouldn't be surprised if in the future we like went back to CCOG and like did an update. So um, just thought that I want to put that out there. Great. That's all I got for now. All righty. Then we'll move on to the next one, the off-leash trails. Okay, so, okay. so it's, not a, it's not an urgent matter. She, was, she and I were just exchanging some emails, and so I figured it would be easier just to call. So it's not an urgent thing. It's just tell her whenever she has oh, Okay. Okay. It's not us. <laughs> Michael McGratton. Oh, okay. She'll call you back later. Okay. okay. It's, not, it's not urgent. Okay. Bye-bye. Oh, bye bye Okay. The uh, leash ordinance and legend allows us, if we so choose, to uh, designate some trails under uh, legends under the Conservation Commission's uh, administrative control. We have four trails. I was thinking of the possibility of creating one at Whitehall and also at the uh, the kettle hole. The reason why is because you'd have one at each side of the town. They also seem to be the trails that are least used. It would be nice to have some more traffic on them to try to help keep maintaining them. So we need to decide whether we would like to do it and whether those are the ones that we designate and what rules that we would have for them. So I have any to open any discussion. Are there a lot of people pushing for this? Like, have we been asked to designate them? I have not received anybody that said that they want to designate. No. 
there were what 13 14 trails in town and so if you're looking at two of them it's a very small amount um you know the correspondence we usually get the wildlife magazine yes so the july august issue just came and in it is an article about dogs on leashes in outdoor spaces and wildlife areas and i think it might be um just a source of more information as we go to look at where we might consider doing it and the rules that would apply so um i can send out um an email with this attached to it I just think it's an interesting article. And right now, as we're considering this, it might add some more information to our decision making. Uh, I see. Yep, go ahead. Say, I see no reason to rush. And I agree with Roberta that um, some kind of assessment, if we were going to do it, some kind of assessment of which trails might be sensitive or you know like i don't feel like we've identified pros and cons i think mike made a good point about like well maybe we could draw more traffic to some underused trails but there may be other pros and cons we're not thinking about like which trails are safe for dogs um mike one concern i would have about the kettle hole is that the trail goes right along the road there and so it's not it's not really a great little segment for a off-leash animal um there may be other trails that go really close to, for example, somebody's property. You know, like I, I think we, before I we would be really, really ready to choose some properties. I'd like to see us do more of an assessment of the pros and cons, both for like the pet safety um, impact on other users and other types of things. Right, Burton Trail, I think would be off bounds, only because of the simple reason that you have to cross town property. To get there and they're the athletic fields and dogs are banned pretty much from athletic fields also if in the future it does get developed into a cross-country training ground that would be problematic with everybody running down the road the dog might decide to chase somebody so burton would be out you know uh let's see what else do we have glacier wow you'd be having a bunch of dogs going to the vet you know what I mean? So that one's out. So those are the only reason I did those two. But the idea that perhaps we'd like to get this and everybody would like to do some more thinking and get some more ideas, that's perfectly fine with me. We we don't have to take any action at this time. That seems to be fine with everybody. Have everybody come up with some ideas and stuff. So for the for this evening here, we'll take no action on this particular agenda item. Alrighty. Okay. Is there any other old business? Oh, excuse me. A quick follow-up question. Do we have, have we ever done an assessment of whether any of our properties have sensitive species of concern or anything like that? Has that kind of environmental assessment been done anytime recently on the property that we manage? Not recently. There was one done a number of years ago on the uh, Whitehall. And there is a copy of the uh, assessment that's in our file in the town hall. Just think that could be something to draw on if we had it for a number of properties. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll grab that thing and start looking through that and see if there's. Unfortunately, there's a lot of bases up there now, but the lower fields that were brush hogged last year, they're nothing but all golden rod. They really was like a sea of yellow golden rod when I was up there. And unfortunately, I didn't see a single honeybee. I was shocked, but uh, so be that. Where, did you see any native bees? No, no, didn't see any, any of them. You know, I went plowing through one of the fields trying to get down to the uh, Chewville Brook to take a look down there and I didn't disturb anything or anybody. I haven't seen any bees. On the on the golden rod? 
Or the yeah. iPhone or even the Bluetooth. There aren't any bees to be on them. There aren't any bees. There aren't enough bees. I couldn't hear that. It's been a very poor year for them anyways this year with the drought. I mean, out of the hives I've got, I've got no honey. I'm just feeding them. You know. Same so, here, Michael. May have had something to do with it. You know what I mean? Why we didn't see any down there. There might be no nectar in them. I don't know. But anyways, is there any other old business come before the commission? I yes. got an item of old business. <laughs> Megan. <laughs> Again, um, I forgot to bring up the logo. Um, so a hike ledyard logo, I had passed out, I, I had emailed out uh, four color versions of it and I could pull them up on my screen and I'm tempted to do a, a share if I need to. Um, did everyone get a chance to look at those? And if so, um, do you have any feedback on what direction you think, um, I don't know on on what what your thoughts are on any of the logo designs. Any thoughts from anyone? I love the concept of the multi season yeah. one, but I was a little concerned that it looks like the tree is dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> a good point. And <clears throat> of the other ones, my favorite is the simplest one with just the blue sky and clouds in the background. Okay, blue sky and clouds in the background. Um. Carmen, who is not here, said she liked the the one with the color stripes across the background. I think that, I don't know. I like that one too. I like the cloud one, but um, again, we'd love to hear more feedback from anyone. Anyone have any thoughts? I actually like the one that stuck with the most blue. It had blue around the outside and um, more blue in the patch. I just thought mm -hmm. it fit with the blue that has been um, added to most of the Ledyard signs and the Colonel Ledyard blue from the high school. And it seemed to fit with the colors that we've been trying to emphasize in other Ledyard projects. Um, thanks for your, your comment. That makes me think of like, I feel like there's a, a, a darker blue associated with Ledger and like the kernels, and I'm wondering, would you want to see like the the that patch, or, like a version of it with a darker blue, like more similar to the colors on the signs around town? I think I think that kind of coordination would be good for the town to have uh, to keep up those kinds of. You look at something, you see the blue, you say, "Oh wow, that." must have something to do with our town or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's not a, so, but this is just one more piece. And as we redo the signs and they all have blue on it, um, the trail patch having blue, I think coordinates it quite nicely. Hey, I'll let, I'll let go Molly and Roberta. I, I, I'd like the season one too, but I kind of said the same thing. Like, like the one half almost looked a little dead, maybe. Um, so I kind of agree with her on that. And then what Roberta brought up, you know, I'm looking at it right now, what we're talking about, and I can definitely see that. Um, I, I having that darker blue, I think would be really cool. I, I like that too. So I think those are two great points. So that, that's just my two cents. All right. So, I, and I think what I'll do is I'll I'll take this feedback here and pass it back to Spencer. Um, he said, you know, he'll work on the design until it's as perfect as possible, you know, for what what we want. So, um, it's really good. So, is there any more feedback that you guys want to pass along that would you, that you would like me to pass along to the designer? No. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. I'll um, pass along to Spencer and. Um, see what he can do with that feedback. Thank you. Alrighty. New business. Uh, I'm going to have to apologize for this one. The uh, first item is a meeting schedule for calendar year 2021. And 
happened. It slipped my mind and I didn't make one up. So I think there'll be no action on this and we'll have that for next week, next month. All right, I apologize. Well, I saw a list of dates included. Um, oh, was it? Okay, excuse me. I don't have the printed out one. I've got my note one. So, okay. So it we do says, have the uh, meeting schedule for calendar year 2021, and it goes till January 2022. It was on a, the email that uh, came for the for the meeting tonight. Okay, okay. I'm looking at my notes and not the uh, the original one. So, uh, so that's a meeting schedule for next year. Uh, I make a motion that uh, we approve this meeting schedule. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor of this uh, schedule for next year? Aye. Aye. All right. Motion passes. Cross it off your list, Mike. <laughs> Maybe I should put it on my list so I can cross it off. <laughs> All right. Next item was discussion concerning the transfer of Founders Preserve to Avalon. All right. The Founders Preserve is down there. Uh, it's between Colonel Midget and Pumpkin Hill. It runs from one side to the other. And I believe the southern border is on the, uh, the town line with Groton. All right, it's 96.2 acres. There was a 36 lot subdivision supposed to go in there. They subdivided it. The developer ran out of money, fell behind in his taxes. The town took it in lieu of taxes. This is the uh, either like a two or three acre shallow pond, which is also a rookery for great blue herons. I think this year they counted nine nests in there. Alrighty. There is also the old, uh, the other name for it is the paint mill. There's the ruins in the sluice way from the old paint mill that used to be down there. There's also a number of historical cairns. I guess they described them. They don't know whether they're Native American. Some people feel the early, early colonial, you know, the uh, root cellars. So there's a number of those. I think there's about three or four of them down there that I've seen. And they also have the old wells from the old days that are stone lined. So it has historical and ecological benefits. Currently, it is one of the two properties that the town allows bow hunting. Alrighty. It's a lottery, uh, only open to uh, alleged residents. And I think this is the second or third year they've done it. If it was transferred to Avalonia, Avalonia, that's why I hope Julie was here. She could probably fill us in more. They are going to respect that during it's the normal archery hunting season for deer under the state rules, regulations, everything like that, that is currently being done. Right now, it's approved. The mayor has approved it. Land use has approved it. And I know some of the town councilors, you know, who are... Uh, are in favor of it. I thought there was a question, Mike, about uh, separating off the house and the lot yes. it's on from the rest of the property. Has that already been done or agreed yes. to? Yes, yes, that's yeah. been done. Okay, yeah. thank you. <laughs> so, what I would like to do, and we can discuss it after I make a motion, is would the Conservation Commission recommend or be in favor of transferring the uh, Founders Road Preserve to Avalonia? So I'll open it up to discussion. Land use and other people feel that La Avalonia has uh, the capabilities and resources to properly maintain it. And therefore, their care would probably benefit the property a whole lot more than the town or the conservation commission. I mean, we have four trails and we we're struggling to keep them up. To you know, is there any other ideas, comments, thoughts? Well, I think the property is safer with Avalonia because if there was once a 
division considered to put a development on, that could come up again. And that will not happen if it's with Avalonia. Right. Or if it remains town yes. property, there's always a possibility. That was another point that was point, pointed out during land use. Uh -huh. And I think the town feels that they would prefer to see it with Avalonia than to have another subdivision put in there. <laughs> also, what this does too is I've, ooh, uh, if Tom is still here, is I believe that your western, your eastern green lane, a greenway would actually come up and actually meet that piece of property. It's in the same vicinity. So that was one of the areas I told you of collaboration where, you know, there are different areas we could collaborate and this would be an area that would be in legend that would probably be able to link up with a greenway coming out of uh a grotto yeah our, our, right now we're, we're we've got green belts proposed green and belts. going into the state for the greenway uh, approvals um we had back in last year we had put in a greenway request to the state but uh, none of it was approved there was no decision from the state they didn't disapprove it but they didn't approve it so we're still developing it. It's a, a, a large uh, portion of our uh, uh, process that we're looking at uh, for next year in regard to how we're going to handle stewardship of these various properties and integrate them into a continuous uh, wildlife uh, and, and, pass and people passenger uh, uh, traffic uh, methodologies. Uh, but we are trying to go in, into three different areas, in, you know, Western, Central, and, and Eastern, as far as trying to get up into Ledger and linking up with your Greenway in particular. Because that's already state approved. Uh, Mike, does this mm -hmm. property fit into that uh, federal wildlife uh, area at the southern end of Ledyard? Yes, it does. Okay. The uh, oh, what is it? The great oh, is it northeast? Oh. Excuse me, Tom, you probably know the name. Yeah, it's the Great Thicket. The Great Thicket. Yes, it does. Okay. Um, I have a question. So, uh, do you know, would Avalonia be like making new trails or are there existing trails or um, do you know like where access would be? Because right now, isn't there, I mean, the, the access is like off of paint mill, right? But that's like through private property. So is this some, if, what do you mean? No, that is a paint, is a pentway, but that pentway is owned by the town. That is town land. That is not a private road. Okay. You would have access to drive down all the way down the end of paint mill. And it's a small area to park a couple of free cars down there. But no, that is a right, that is a uh, town. Okay, access. so that would be the main where the main access is then, or the yes. the end. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Hmm. It's off of Pumpkin Hill. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Already, like I said, there's a motion on the table to uh, approve. I'll give a blessing to approve the transfer of the founders preserved to Avalonia. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 One, two, three. Aye. <laughs> All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, six ayes. Opposed? None. The, the motion carries. Already. All right, just a discussion here. The last item on here was the uh, discussion concerning the you know, construction of the bog bridge at Burton Trail. I'm currently uh, speaking with a gentleman. He's got 25 years CBs in the Navy. And he does, he's one of these gentlemen who likes to do smaller projects. If you're going to build an entire dish in your house, it's going to take more than three days. He doesn't want to talk to you. But he's more than the handyman will come up and put a few cabinets up. He's kind of like one of these in-betweens. It's difficult to find any carpenters that are willing to take on a project this small, especially when the building is starting to pick up again. He's expressed an interest. We've looked at it. 
they've come up with a preliminary ideas for it. All right. I'm still waiting for him. He was supposed to be giving me a, uh, an estimate uh, last Friday. <clears throat> last Friday. But I didn't receive it yet. So I'll be in contact with him again this weekend after, you know, now that the holidays passed. But you basically, sent, you sent they, pictures out with two strips of boards. Um, have you revised that or changed it in any way? Because people had some real issues with running on them. Correct. Those are just examples of other ones that they've done already. I mean, if you go online and you plug in bog bridges, get images, you'll see hundreds of different ones and different ways of constructing them. Okay. You know what I mean? I was envisioning it being about 20 to 24 inches wide. It's not going to be a plank like this. It's going to be, you know, you'd be able to run. You'd be single file, but you would be able to run across it. Okay. And with 12 by 10, 12 by 2, excuse me, 2 by 10, 2 by 12 planking with sufficient support underneath it, they're not going to, you're not going to bounce. Uh, the people who had expressed that concern weren't here, so I thought we should at least say that it wasn't going to be what pictures like you sent us. It's going to be very similar, very similar. It's the same concept. I don't know what the bog bridge looks up in uh, Pine. Molly, what does that look like? Um. Well, we did, we've talked about it in this group before. I, there's like some, they're not standard bog bridges, those. They're not, um, the ones I'm thinking of are the big ones, like on the, along the power access board. Oh, okay. All right. There are, I think there are some other bog bridges <coughs> that are more typical up there, but um, I haven't walked that way recently. So I don't remember. There's this. I'm also looking at uh, potential cost. We know that, you know, all of that material have got to be hoofed down there. And it's about a half, quarter of a mile down just to the uh, construction site. And to build something similar to the one we did before, I don't know if we have it in our budget. So I'm trying to think of something in between that, you know, is doable. Does not mean that if they decide to expand that into a uh, cross-country training it's possibility you know a uh, another one could be put up next to it or that you could add to it you know what i mean but for the present time with our present plans i figure and this is probably the best solution to that and especially now when it's the dry season and i think we measured it out it's probably about 100 we, we thought it was 100 feet it's about 120 feet Well, if more can get added to it at a later time, it might be worth it to spend some of our money now and, as you've said, get something in place and then work on addition to it later. And we might have more money later. It's possible. Or, you know, you know, that's a uh, cross country teams may renew their interest again. Right. right. In the future. This is Mary. Um, do you need to get any kind of a permit or an okay from the town since that's town property to put up the bridge? Or are you is it a replacement for one that fell down? No, this would be an original, and I do okay. believe that I'll have to go before uh, in and get a, a permit for it. Yes. Okay. The reason I ask is I was just thinking about the problems that the Tritown Trail is having, trying to do a bridge. And I was just wondering if, you know, you had the town's blessing before you <laughs> took all that trouble. Well, they say it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission, but no. <laughs> no, I, I, I understood that there's a very real possibility I would have to move forward in the Okay, law. okay. And speak to that, yes. <laughs> If there's uh, any more discussions, ideas, thoughts. Uh, my, my thought is, is, you know, you also want to consider long term, um, I guess, and, and, and the design. I think the simpler design gives you 
better ability, I would think, to repair if something ever happened. Um, I don't know if that's, you know, another consideration anyway. Yes, it could be because it is a wet area and some parts of the bridge are going to remain wet for a good part, moist for a good part of the year. They will decay. Alrighty, we probably are looking at maybe 10 years, but the other planking that is above it probably will have a longer lifespan. So you may only have to replace sections of the supports underneath it because they'd be const constant contact with, uh, with moisture is what I'm thinking. Yes, that's part. It's a good idea. Well, if you don't pursue it, we will never have an idea what it costs or how it will uh, solve the problem of using that trail. So I think it's better to go ahead with it while it's dry than uh, keep delaying. Right. He said, how soon did you want it? And I said, before the ground freezes. So we probably got another, probably oh. two months at least. Yep. And I'll make sure I get a PO first. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Is there any new business anybody would like to discuss? No. And I would like to make a, a well, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank Beatrice and Karen, Kevin, and Tom this evening for coming up. Please feel free to come back at any time. And then I would make a motion to, uh, for adjournment. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Six in favor. Opposed? Motion carries. All ready. Good night. Good night, all. Good night. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye. It's hard to imagine that Sweden was a military power. This fort was built to secure the city from attack by sea. The ramparts remain, but they're manned not by soldiers, but by sun worshippers, enjoying Sweden's long summer day. My favorite lookout post, Annette's Homestead Cafe. For Swedes, their coffee and pastry break is a ritual embraced with all the vigor of a constitutional right. And here, it's every life to its fullest just seems to come natural. For an even more peaceful and remote destination, ride a couple hours past Rotsholm and hop off in Svartsholm. The little grocery provides this island community with whatever it needs. Residents stop their cabins to the island dancer to a movie. And visitors can pop a rental bus. In moments, you're out in the countryside, immersed in pastoral farmland and pristine nature. Your bike ride is memorably capped with a stop at the island eatery. We requested the house specialty and were overwhelmed with the melody of the ball. Even if you don't leave.